Hello and welcome to Election Countdown, our weekly series of podcasts leading up to the UK general election, in which we'll be looking at how the main political parties are addressing, or maybe not addressing, the key economic and financial issues facing the UK. This week we're going to look at regulation. I'm joined as ever by Neil Prothero. And the first thing I want to ask you, Neil, is has New Labour's tripartite approach to regulation now broken down completely? I think it's been broken down for, for quite some time now. Um, you can't really um, face the, the largest financial crisis for 60 or 70 years and uh, the near collapse of, of half your banking system and, and not conclude that, that the errors were made in the financial regulatory structure that was in place at that time. Um, one of the main criticisms was that the splitting up of responsibilities between the Bank of England and the Financial Services Authority in terms of monitoring different areas of the financial sector that created a sort of blurring of accountability, some confusion. Um, each wasn't quite sure what the other one was doing on how big the potential risks that were growing were and didn't necessarily appreciate maybe the, the huge crossover risks between the two sections. Um, now at the moment there's a bit of uncertainty uh, for both the Bank of England and the FSA as to where the, the structure is going post-election. Um, obviously with the election outcome unclear. Um, on the one hand you have the government which favours probably increasing, enhancing the responsibilities of the FSA and minimising the Bank of England, England's involvement in the financial sector. Um, whereas the Conservative government has basically said it's going to virtually abolish the FSA, it's going to just make it a, a sort of consumer watchdog and move all of its um, sort of financial responsibilities over to the Bank of England. Um, so there's a bit of uncertainty as to what's going to happen post-election, as to who wins and what, what measures are taken. Um, but obviously, given that polls are still suggesting probably that the Tories have a better chance of getting in, that the FSA is probably under a little bit more pressure with, with regards to its future and what's going to happen. Um, so we'll have to see, see what, how events unfold. OK, let's go back to the whole question of regulation. And what do you think, Neil, about the Conservative solution to the problem, which is to give the Bank of England a bigger role? Uh, I think it certainly has, has its advantages, I think, bringing together responsibilities under a single regulator in whatever form. I think there's now a consensus that, that is the way to go. Um, now, whether it's the Bank of England or the FSA, I'm not too sure it makes a huge amount of difference. I think the consensus is realising that this macro prudential supervision in terms of looking at the wider financial sector in terms of risk and stability is now an accepted view. So whether the Bank of England take on this responsibility or the FSA take on this responsibility, I'm not too sure. I think more important is the framework within that's then created in terms of, of how robust it is and how it's able to impose future regulations, tighter controls, etc. And that's where I have my doubts about how, how much it will be able to do. But I think bringing, bringing it all under one roof is definitely the way forward. Now, Vince Cable, throughout the whole credit crunch for the Lib Dems, has called for a toughening up of the regulatory regime. But do you think that boat has now effectively sailed? Um, I think a lot of politicians, a lot of people have been calling for tougher regulation for, for quite some time now. Um, but I think at the moment, this current moment, in terms of, of major regulation reforms going forward, I think the boat has definitely sailed and may actually also be sinking at the moment. I think mean, there's very little progress on, on fundamental reforms at the present time. Um, probably for the main reason that the banking sector in the UK and elsewhere is in such, still such a fragile state and um, trying to impose tough requirements in terms of capital, liquidity, etc. at the moment just is, isn't feasible. Um, now, I think looking forward, um, I think the pressure will probably build over the next year or two um, if I think that the recovery will be very sluggish and unemployment will continue to rise. And I think this sort of two-speed economy between the real economy and what's happening in the financial sector um, will put pressure on regulators and governments to actually impose some sort of tighter regulation. Um, but it's going to be a very gradual process as a balancing act between the fragility of the banks and trying to offset sort of unrest and disappointment from the general public in terms of trying to clamp down on the financial sector. So it's a difficult difficult balancing act ahead um, for the government. Do you think there's a feeling among all the parties that the city is simply too important to be over-regulated? Um, I think it's, it's obviously still a very important sector. It accounted for about 8% of GDP in 2008, obviously a little bit less. Um, so in that regard, 
it's not massively important, but looking at the amount of tax revenue and being a key driver of economic growth in the years prior to the crisis, it was very important. And looking ahead, those, those two factors still apply to quite a large degree. We're still reliant on the banking sector to drive some sort of recovery, broader recovery for the UK. The banks have to improve their balance sheet positions. They have to become stronger. And without that, there probably will not be much of a recovery at all. So in that sense, we're quite reliant on that area. Um, and also, the UK still does have quite a, a comparative advantage in the financial sector ahead of other countries. So it would seem a bit strange when other areas are so weak in the economy to, to clamp down quite so quickly on areas such as insurance and asset management, not necessarily banking itself, but other areas of the financial services sector that are still very strong in the UK. I mean, in summary, do you think that politicians essentially fear the city far too much? I think there's been obviously a massive sea change in opinion over the past few years, um, previous decade. Everyone was, was quite trusting with the financial sector, among politicians at least. They were quite happy for it to regulate itself, as we've seen in light touch. Um, now, obviously, things have changed massively since then. The trust has been shot, both within politicians and amongst the public. Um, and that could, I think, deteriorate even more as the years go by. Um, but also, there is this fear, I guess, up to a point among politicians that the financial sector is still vitally important to the UK, and so it can't be seen to really clamp down really strongly on it, uh, both because we need the banks to recover to lead any sort of recovery, and also because these, these are very powerful, influential, big multinational corporations. And as we've seen, any, any sort of major efforts to try to impose regulation, the lobbyists come out very quickly and sort of threaten that, um, that there's a potential for, for a weaker economy going forward if these measures are implemented. So being reliant on the UK economy for these financial sector f services to grow again, I think any sort of chance of this so-called rebalancing of the UK economy that, that we do need longer term, I think that's still quite a few years away. Now keep your votes coming. Remember, we're asking you whether you believe after the general election there'll be a hung parliament, a conservative majority or a Labour majority. And remember to tune in again next week for more news and views on the election countdown. Until then, thank you and goodbye.